In this example, we have a 3 by 3 matrix A, and we have two vectors, vector U and vector B. Now, we're also going to define a transformation, so T from R3 to R3, by our matrix transformation, so the image of vector X under the action of T equals matrix A times vector X. Now, we're asked to find the transformation of vector U, or in other words, the image of vector U under the transformation T. And then in part B, we are asked to find a vector X in R3 whose image under T is vector B. Once we find that, we then want to determine whether or not it's unique. And of course, we will explain why. So here we go, part A. And again, we are asked to compute T of vector U. So in other words, the image of vector U under the action of T. So to compute this transformation, we'll use the matrix multiplication. So you have the image of vector U under the action of T, by definition, will be defined as matrix A times vector U. So let's plug in our 3 by 3 matrix A. So our first column is 1, 0, 4. Our second column is negative 4, 1, minus 17. And our third column is 4, negative 4, 16. And we are multiplying this 3 by 3 matrix by the given vector u. So that's 1, 2, 0. Now, to compute this matrix vector multiplication, I leave the process up to you, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the row column rule, or the row vector rule. This also goes by the name the dot product. So with this row column rule, we are going to multiply each row of matrix A by this column vector. So here we go. We have that this will be equal to our first row, which is 1, negative 4, 4. And we are multiplying this by the column vector, vector u, 1, 2, 0. We have the second row, which is 0, 1, negative 4. And we multiply this by the column vector u, 1, 2, 0. And last but not least, we have our third row of matrix A, 4, negative 17, 16. And we are multiplying this by the column vector u, 1, 2, 0. And so this is going to produce that new vector. So here we go to apply this dot product rule. We are going to take the sum of the products of the like entries. So looking at our first row here, we have 1 times 1 plus negative 4 times 2 plus 4 times 0. Moving on to the second row, we have 0 times 1 plus 1 times 2 plus negative 4 multiplied by 0. And last but not least, we have our third row, which is 4 multiplied by 1 plus negative 17 multiplied by 2 plus 16 multiplied by 0. And so what is this going to leave us with? So we have our first row. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 4 times 2 is minus 8 plus 0. The second row is 0 plus 2 plus 0. And our third and final row is 4 minus 34 plus 0. And now taking the sum of these products, we are left with the beautiful final answer of negative 7, 2 minus 30. And that's our final answer. So we can say that, therefore, the image of vector u under the action of t is the vector negative 7 to negative 30. 
And just for fun here, let's pretend that this question is on a quiz or an exam. How would you check that this is, in fact, the correct answer? Well, one way to check is to row reduce the augmented matrix. So matrix A, and we're going to augment this with the image of vector U onto the action of T. So we are augmenting matrix A with this new vector, the image of vector U under the action of T, and we're going to row reduce this to row reduced echelon form. And what we should find is that vector U, this vector 1, 2, 0, is in fact a solution to the system. In part B, we are asked to find vector X whose image under the transformation is vector B. So we need to solve T of vector B, or excuse me, T of vector X equals vector B for vector X. Well, how are we going to solve this? Well, let's keep in mind that this transformation is defined using a matrix transformation. So, in other words, we need to solve matrix A times vector X equals vector B for vector X. So, rewriting this, we have matrix A, that's 1, 0, 4. Negative 4, 1, negative 17, 4, negative 4, 16. So there is matrix A multiplied by vector X. So this is a vector X in R3. So it has three entries, X sub 1, X sub 2, X sub 3. And this, of course, is equal to this given vector B, negative 4, negative 10, negative 2. So this looks awfully familiar. This is our matrix equation, a non-homogeneous equation. So in order to solve this, we are going to use our familiar friend, row reduction, and we are going to row reduce the augmented matrix A with vector B to row reduced echelon form. And this will provide us with vector X as long as our system is consistent. So here we go. We have the augmented matrix. 1, 0, 4, negative 4, 1, minus 17, 4, negative 4, positive 16. So there is matrix A, and we are augmenting this with vector B. Negative 4, negative 10, negative 2. So taking our first pivot position here, 1, we want to use this to eliminate the entry below it. So we'll do minus 4 times the first row plus the third row to get that new and reduced third row. So this leaves us with the equivalent augmented matrix. So our first two rows remain as they are. We have 1, negative 4, 4, negative 4. We have 0, 1, negative 4, negative 10. And then we have negative 4 plus 4 gives us 0. We have positive 16 minus 17 is negative 1. We have negative 16 plus 16 is 0. And last but not least, we have 16 minus 2, which is 14. And our first column is all set. So we move to our second pivot position. And we want to use this pivot to eliminate the entry above it and below it. So we'll need two steps here. We'll do four times the second row plus the first row to get that new and reduced first row. And then we'll also do the second row plus the third row to attain the new and reduced third row. So this leaves us with, we have zero plus one is one. We have positive four minus four is zero. We have negative 16 plus 4 is minus 12. And then we have negative 40 minus 4 is minus 44. And our second row remains as it is. 0, 1, negative 4, negative 10. And then we have 0 plus 0 is 0. We have 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 4 plus 0 is negative 4. 
And last but not least, negative 10 plus 14 is 4. Beautiful! So our second column is all set. And we are ready to move on to our third and final pivot. But wait a second. We have some important observations to make about this matrix. Looking at this matrix, what do you observe? Well, this matrix is certainly in echelon form. Now, in terms of this echelon form, notice that we have a basic variable in each one of the columns. So a basic variable exists in each column of our row reduced matrix. So if there is a basic variable in each column, this lets us know that this ha matrix equation has no free variables. And if this system has no free variables, then the matrix equation, the non-homogeneous equation, will have only one unique solution. So we can further conclude that matrix A times vector X equals vector B has one unique solution. Woohoo! So we've actually already, just from echelon form, answered the second part of this question. We can see that a basic variable exists in each column, meaning that there's no free variables, and vector x is going to be unique. Woohoo! So let's find vector x now. We're almost there. So we are taking our third and final pivot and using this pivot position to eliminate the entries above it. So we need two steps here. We'll do minus three times the third row plus the first row to attain the new and reduced first row. We'll also do minus the third row plus the second row to attain that new and reduced second row. And might as well take this one step further and let's scale that third row by a factor of minus one fourth. So what is this leaving us with? Well, we have zero plus one is one. Zero plus zero is zero. And then positive 12 minus 12 is zero. Then we have negative 12 minus 44 is minus 56. We have the second row is 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, positive 4 minus 4 is 0, and then negative 4 minus 10 is minus 14. And last but not least, scaling that third row by a factor of negative 1 fourth, we have 0, 0, 1, negative 1. So we have attained that row reduced echelon form, and this is letting us know that x sub 1 is equal to minus 56, that x sub 2 is equal to negative 14, and that x sub 3 is negative 1. And we're able to make our final conclusions. We can say that therefore, vector x in R3 has the components negative 56, negative 14, negative 1. And so this vector x, or we can say that the image of vector x under the action of t is the given vector b. And that's our beautiful final answer. So this is the vector x whose image under t is that given vector b. And we've already answered the second part of this question. We know that this vector x is unique. So vector x is unique. How do we know it's unique? Well, if we think back to echelon form, we observed here that there was a basic variable in each of the columns. And we know that if a basic variable is existing in each column, then this system has no free variables, which is equivalent to saying, or is telling us, that the non-homogeneous equation, matrix A times vector X equals vector B, will have only one unique solution. 
this vector x.